So in this video, we're going to be working on the R Portfolio section, which is going to be a photo gallery. And when you hover over the photo gallery, you can see some content will appear with some icons, a name of the app, and also an app description. So before we go ahead and get started with that, I just realized after watching back the last two videos, I never showed you the actual mobile version or the smaller viewport for these two sections of services and the Why Choose Us. So before we get started, let me briefly show you that. So we did use all the code to make this possible but I just never went ahead and demonstrated or showed you what it was going to look like so as you can see here once we go from a viewport of I believe under 900 pixels or is it 800 I think it's 800 you can see that now instead of having a two uh, columns we have one and it still looks great as you can see here if we continue to shrink this down to a roughly size of an iPhone they all look good they're still hanging off the page here they're centered and everything looks good and the same thing for the why choose us section so yeah, just wanted to go ahead and start off with that as I realized watching back the last two videos, I never went ahead and demonstrated what these were going to look like on a mobile uh, viewport. So with that being said, let's head over to our index.html and get started. To begin, we're going to go ahead and start off with our comment here and we're going to call this photo gallery. All right. And then we're going to create our section tag here, which is going to have a class of photo dash gallery okay so inside of the section tag we're going to go ahead and create our div for our container to contain this section and inside of this container we're going to have an h2 and it's going to say our port folio okay now we need to go ahead and create our grid so just as we did in the service section here we're going to go ahead and create a div with a class of grid to go ahead and create that grid and we're going to go ahead and say div dot grid okay now Inside here, just as we did in the services section and our Y section, we need to go ahead and create some grid items. Well, I guess we didn't do that in the Y section. We went ahead and created some flex items. But in the services section, we had these things called flex rows, which were our grid items. Now, we're not going to be creating rows for our grid items here. They're going to be uh, in a column fashion. So we don't need to actually enable a flex row in here. So we're going to go ahead and refer to these as our grid items. So for our grid items, I'm going to go ahead and create the first one, and then I'm going to copy and paste in the additional ones because they are the same markup and to save some time, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, I will go ahead and leave the additional markup down below in a code pen, so if you go ahead and open that link up, you should be able to copy and paste all of those in and not have to go ahead and type them all out if you don't want to. Now, if you want to get practice writing some HTML, then I definitely recommend uh, typing all of those out and just pausing the video once we get to that point. So to begin here, let's go ahead and create our first grid item. So we're going to go ahead and give this a class of cow and then also a secondary class of photo dash one. So we're giving this a secondary class of photo dash one because we're going to need to align things with the grid using some kind of reference to our grid item here. And since I want to uh, give all of the grid items the same layout. We're going to go ahead and give them all the same class of cow, and then we're going to target each one individually using a secondary class of photo one, and then the second item will have a class of photo two. Okay, now inside of our grid item here, we're going to start with an image tag, and we're going to go ahead and get to the image folder here, and we're going to look for the section or folder called portfolio, and then we're going to use the first picture of app one. Let me go ahead and mute the Slack notifications there. And that's going to be it for our image. So next up, we want to then create our background. So if we head over to our portfolio here in our photo gallery, you can see when we hover over these, we have this nice blue background and then our content. So to create the blue background, we're going to go ahead and simply create another div here and then give this a class of VG. And then we'll go ahead and style up that background in the CSS later on in this video. And that's all we're going to have to do now for the markup. Next up, we want to create a section for our content. So I'm going to go ahead and create a div here and give us a class of content. Now, inside of here, we're going to start with a P tag, which is going to have our heading or our title. And we're going to go ahead and call this app one. And then we're also going to have another P tag for our description. And for right now and for this demo and video, we're going to just go ahead and call this app description. And I think I spelled it right, but let's go ahead and not capitalize that D. Okay. Now we need to go ahead and create another div for our icons here. So what we're going to go ahead and do inside of our div content here is create a div without a class because we can go ahead and style this div specifically by nesting our div um, tag inside of our content in the CSS. So we don't need to go ahead and give this a class. 
and we're going to go ahead and keep our HTML less cluttered and not always have to use a class if we don't need to. Now inside of this div, we're going to have two icons. The first one is going to have a class of FA and then FA-I. And our second icon is going to have a class, uh, let's go ahead and backspace here, class of FAS, right? Oh, this first one should have FAS too, okay? So FAS uh, space and then FAI. And then for this one, we're going to be using a class, a secondary class of FA external link alt. Okay, so if we go ahead and head over to our demo here or a live version, you'll see we have our picture and then all the content. You're not going to see that background just yet because it doesn't have any content in it. And we'll go ahead and get to that, like I said, later on in the CSS. So that is going to be it for the general structure of each one of our grid items here. So just below column one, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in the additional ones. And if I save this, you'll see the same effect will happen here. We have our, our photo and then our um, our content for that photo. So that is the general markup for this section. So let's head over to our style.css and get started. So to begin here, let's go ahead and start off with our comment. We're going to say photo gallery here and then let's go ahead and create our photo gallery class and go ahead and open that up so first off we want to go ahead and style our h2 and not our height two pixels and we're going to say text align that to the center now let's go ahead and start to style up our grid here and get all that figured out so right now you can see if we go over to our live demo here of the finished product uh, let me get off that you can see that when we start to shrink down here I believe 900 pixels is the first viewport change or below 900 and we go to a two uh, column layout and then when we get to I believe 600 we're going to have a one column grid layout. Okay so let's go ahead and implement that here in our photo gallery. So let's go ahead and target our grid and inside here we're going to use a property we used already before called grid template columns. We're going to set that to one FR for our mobile view. Now, we haven't used this property yet, but we're going to be calling a property called grid auto rows, and we're going to set that to 125 pixels per row. So I'm not going to get too in depth with a grid tutorial here. There is many of those out there on YouTube, and if you guys want to, maybe you can go ahead and do one. But if we go ahead and look at what that actually did here, if I go ahead and inspect the grid here in Chrome, um, you can see, well, this one won't have it. This is our live demo, which already has that property. So if I click grid here, you can see that each grid right here from one down to two is 125 pixels. And we're going to go ahead and use our secondary class here to go ahead and make those span a certain amount of rows. So that's pretty much how we're going to be doing this. There may be other ways that are better, um, but this is the way I chose to go ahead and create this photo gallery. Okay. So next up, we're going to go ahead and have a gap of 16 <clears throat> pixels. Now let's go ahead and start to create our media queries here for our other views. So we're going to say min width and we're going to say 600 pixels and I believe I spelled media wrong. Let's go ahead and fix that media. And here we're going to use another property called grid temple columns again and we're going to be using the repeat and we're going to say 2, 1, FR, which means you want two fractional units. So that'll be 50%, and that'll give us the two-column row, as you can see we have uh, right here. Okay. Now we need to go ahead and do our desktop and laptop version. So we're going to say app media again, and we're going to say min width of 900 pixels. And once again, we're going to use that grid temple columns property, and we're going to go ahead and set it to repeat, and we want 3, 1 FR, which will give us a three grid column layout. Okay, so that is all we're going to need to do for our grid here. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are right now. And as you can see, it doesn't look great at all. We need to go ahead and do some styling to each one of our grid items. So let's go ahead and start with that. So just below grid, we're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to create a comment here. We're going to say defaults for photo gallery uh items okay now let's go ahead and start with our column here so we're going to say dot cal and we're going to give this a position of relative okay next we want to then target our image specifically inside of here and we're going to give this a position of relative we're going to have it say object fit and cover we're going to display this image as block and we want the width to be 100 percent as well as the height and then we want to put a border 
radius of 12 pixels to make those images around it. So if we go ahead and take a look now, you should see that they are contained and now each one is taking up 125 pixels because by default, we're having each item span 125 pixels as we have set in the grid auto rows property right here. But we will go ahead and change that in just a few moments. So moving on, we need to go ahead and style our background property here. So by default, we want this to have a border radius of 12 pixels to match our image. We're going to give this a transition of 500 milliseconds ease all. We're going to have the top be, well actually let me go ahead and position this absolute so it makes sense. So we're going to position this absolute, so it's going to be position absolute to our image or our column, whatever you want to go ahead and refer that to. And then we're going to go ahead and set the top property to zero to put at the very top and give this a width of 100% and also a height of 100%. So if we look now, you'll see nothing has happened because we never gave uh, this background a color yet, which you will do um, when we set up our hover. And when we hover over it, we'll make the background appear, okay? So next up, we're going to start to style our content. So let's go ahead and target our content class here. And we're gonna say a color here of white for all the font coloring. We're going to display this as flex. We're going to give this a flex direction of column. We're going to justify this content to the center. We're going to align the items to the center so that it goes horizontally and vertically in the center of each of our, uh, our images here. We're going to give this a transition of 500 milliseconds ease all as well. We're going to set the opacity by default to be zero. We're going to position this as well, absolute, and we're gonna set it to the top of zero. And we want to set the width to 100% and the height of as well, 100%. So once again, when we look at this, we're not gonna see anything happen besides now that content is no longer there because right now, if I go ahead and inspect this, it should be positioned absolute to our images. So if I hover over here, if I look at content, it is actually on top of our image, which is what we are looking for. And if we go ahead and expand this, we'll now have three. And if we go ahead and shrink it down below 600, each one will take up one, or it'll go to our one column layout. So things are starting to take shape. So let's continue on here. So for our paragraph uh, and our content, how we're gonna go ahead and target these is by using a pseudo class or a pseudo and we're gonna say p, and we're gonna say nth dash child, and we're going to target the first child in our content, or our first paragraph tag in our content of one, which will be this one right here. So this is another way to select items without using classes. So I wanted to go ahead and throw some differences in there. Now you could go ahead and use classes on here, it's whatever you want to do, but this way it's just less markup and there is ways to go ahead and do that by using this method here. So for this, we're gonna give this a font weight of 600. We're going to do the font size here of 24 pixels. We're going to go ahead and give this a margin bottom of four pixels as well. And we're gonna do the same method here to target our second paragraph tag. And we're gonna say P nth child, and we're gonna say two. Now the only thing we're gonna do for this is give this a margin bottom of four pixels. So let's go ahead and save that. Now lastly, what we want to go ahead and style here is our I tag. So what we wanna say is we're gonna give this a cursor of a pointer. We're gonna go ahead and say the font size of these icons is 18 pixels. By default, it would be 16. We're gonna give this a padding of 10 pixels on all sides. Set the border radius to round these of 50%. And then we're gonna give this a background color of 004289, okay? And that's going to be it for our content. Now we need to go ahead and fix it so when we hover over these, we'll see that content. Now well, how we're gonna do that is we're going to say inside of our column, I believe, yes, inside of our column, we hover over, we want to go ahead and change some properties. So let's go ahead and head back to the top here and say for our column, we're gonna say right below here, we want to do this inside, we're gonna say and, and we're gonna say hover. Now when we hover over this, you want to target our BG class, and we want to set the background color to an RGBA value here, of zero, 
59, 122, and then make that a 70% opacity. Okay, so now if we hover over these, uh, let me go ahead and close this out, you should see that nice blue color appear over each image. But now we need to go ahead and display that content. So let's go ahead and fix that as well inside of the hover. We're gonna say content, and then simply set the opacity to one. And if we do that, you should see our content appears now within each image. So the only thing we need to do now is make each one of these uh, um, grid items span a certain amount of rows to get this desired effect as we have here on our live demo. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, I want to mention, too, that the reason why we have a smooth transition here is because we are using the transition property on our content of 500 milliseconds ease all. Now, if we got rid of these here and we didn't have them, let me show you what'll happen here. You can see that now it's just very abrupt and it doesn't really have a smooth transition, but if we uh, apply those again, you'll see it has that very smooth transition of it appearing and disappearing, which is what we're going for, okay? Just wanted to go ahead and point that out. So let's go ahead and work on spanning our photos to make it look like this. And it's actually really simple to go ahead and do. So what we're gonna say is I'm gonna go ahead and go below our column here, and we're gonna start to target our classes. So for our photo one, we're going to go ahead and say we want to span the grid row, and we want to use a property called span, and we're gonna say three. So what we're saying when we do grid row span three is that we want our photo one, which is going to be this right here, to span three rows. So if I save this, you should see now this photo right here is going to span three rows. So you can see how we can create this very staggered effect by using this property. So let's go ahead and continue on here. And it's actually going to be pretty easy. What we're going to say here now is we're going to target a few of our classes here, and we're going to say photo dash two. We're going to say photo six, photo seven, photo, let's see here, photo eight, and also photo nine here. And what we're going to do is we're going to span these by two. So we're going to say grid row and then span those two rows. And then for our final three photos, we have photo and we're going to say three. We're going to say photo four and then we're going to say photo five and we're going to span these five rows. Okay, so we're going to say grid row and span those by five. So if we take a look at this now, you should see we have the same effect or the same layout as we do on our live demo. So that's a really easy way to go ahead and set up a staggered photo gallery that makes it look a lot less um, you know, symmetrical. You can align your photos in this fashion by simply going ahead and messing with these spans. So this is what I chose to go ahead and do for this section. You can go ahead and span these and mess with them any way you want. So say, for example, we span this two. You can see that now this spans two and it, you know, creates a whole different look for everything. So feel free to go ahead and mess with that any way you choose. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to three to give it the look we had here. And then that's going to pretty much be it for this photo gallery section. Last thing we need to go ahead and do is head back up to our uh, padding class here or our padding uh, where we set our padding and then simply go ahead and say photo gallery and we should have that padding applied. So if we go ahead and inspect this and we go ahead and shrink it down uh, the viewport, you can see that everything uh, responds how we had set it and it looks great. So. Moving along in the next section, we're going to go ahead and tackle the testimonials, which we're going to be using a plugin called Owl Carousel. So we'll be starting on this in the next video.